group of Gen Z diversity all sorts ransack a decommissioned space station, which can only go well. But surprise, it doesn't. They awaken a bunch of face huggers, the silly buggers. And they've got to find a way off this death trap without any stowaways tagging along. Pour yourself a large cup of member berry juice for Alien 1.5. Hello there, you loose units, and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Reviews. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew Riles. That's right, Alien Romulus, directed by Fede Alvarez. Known for directing the Evil Dead remake, Don't Breathe, and The Girl in the Spider's Web. We meet Rain and her synthetic brother, Andy. They're orphans living on a mining planet run by Wayland Yutani, and dream of a better life anywhere else. Apparently the only way off this planet is you must accumulate an ungodly amount of working hours to get a futuristic passport. Kind of like YouTube, where you need 1 billion subscribers and 1 trillion hours of view time to get any revenue. And on that note, hit the subscribe icon. Cheers. Then they meet a group of diversity all sorts who have a plan of getting off this planet. Apparently there's a decommissioned space station just in orbit that will self-destruct by hitting a Saturn-style ring in 36 hours. Stakes! And there seems to be some pricey cryogenic sleeping pods sitting on the space station that can go for a pretty penny. All the team want to use them for themselves? I don't know. Either way, they're planning on robbing the ship. However, the leader of the pack, Tyler, has a boner for rain, hence why she's there. Not only that, but the team need her synthetic brother Andy, as he can speak the space station's language, Mother. Hi, Mandy. Oh, hi, Mandy. This is Rain's ticket off this world. She's a small town girl in a mining world, and she's ready to take a spaceship anywhere. But hang on a second, I thought you needed an ungodly amount of working hours to accumulate to get off this planet so you can leave it. But apparently they're okay with just flying up into orbit, that's fine? Don't worry, I'm sure all of this was explained in one of the 15 heavy dialogue scenes leading up to this point. So anyway, they get on a ship and leave to orbit immediately with no consequences. They arrive at the space station, creep around for a little bit, and it's about the uh, 45 minute mark when they wake up some face huggers. And wouldn't you know it? One of them gets knocked up by a facehugger, and we've all seen an alien film, so we know how this is going to play out. But if you haven't seen an alien film previously, fear not. Because we get a cameo from a horribly CGI'd, de-aged Ash back from the dead from the first alien film that gives the characters some exposition dumping on what's to be expected next. And then for the next hour and a half or so, we get heaps of rip-offs, I mean, homages to previous Alien films. Such as the line, Get away from her, you bitch. Our leading Lady Rain going full-blown Ripley in the third act from the second Alien film, Aliens. Except this time, she's not going back for Newt, the little girl. No, no, no. She's going after her synthetic brother, Andy. In tow with pulse rifle and all. And we get Ash's famous line, You have my sympathies. Even the climax has a human slash xenomorph hybrid that gets blown out of an airlock. Albeit in a convoluted roundabout way of doing so, but it's absolutely identical almost to the climax of Alien Resurrection. Hi, Mandy. Oh, hi, Mandy. Oh, yeah. This film had a great concept when I originally heard about it for a monster movie. You've got a ragtag team of misfits who have a certain amount of time to obtain some things through a heist. And they're trying to do all this to get a better life for themselves. But unfortunately they disturb the monster and it starts killing them off one by one and they have to fight to survive. Great! Perfect concept for a horror film. Then why not set it in space and have the monster a xenomorph? What could possibly go wrong? Apparently, everything. You're going in this, I suspect, to go see an alien film with some xenomorphs. We've all seen a xenomorph, we know the lore, we know what they do, and we've come to expect to see this. But don't expect too much screen time with those xenomorphs, no no no. They're only in about the last part of the film. This film honestly should be called Facehuggers Romulus, because they get way more screen time. Also, this entire film, I was rooting for the xenomorph to kill this band of assholes. None of the characters in this film are likeable. They're a bunch of mean, self-centred pieces of shit who are horrible to one another. And they've all looked like they walked out of an LA Scene Studies screen acting class. 
They're so generic and bland, they look like they'd be more suited on a Nike ad or an Adidas commercial. This is what shits me about casting in modern films. They cast the most generic, bland, boring people who are void of charisma. A blank canvas, if you will. Like, look at older movies. Look at the original Alien, for instance. They had people with interesting faces and personalities. I mean, look at Sigourney Weaver back in the day, the lead. She was not conventionally Hollywood bombshell by any stretch of the imagination, but she was tough, interesting, and sexy in her own unique way. The only really likeable character in this film is Andy, played by David Johnson. At least he had something going on with his character, and I actually rooted for him. The only really good thing I will say about this film, honestly, is the look of it. It looks and feels awesome and ties itself in with the original Alien film, albeit a little bit too dark at times to see what's going on. And I like the old school pixelated technology that they used. You know, bringing it back to the original film. There is, however, one scene. Just one scene that is wholeheartedly original. It's a scene involving zero gravity and two characters trying to avoid acid blood that is moving around them. Bah, this film is produced by Ridley Scott, and it did the thing. You guessed it, tying itself in to Prometheus, making this the third instalment in a trilogy. Because as I'm sure you know, the black goo comes back, hence why there's an engineer slash xenomorph hybrid at the end. All this does is undo the lore and the continuity from the second film, Aliens. Hence why probably James Cameron walked away from putting his name on this piece of shit. And coming back to the de-aging CGI of deceased actors. Bringing back Ian Holm from the dead for a cheeky cameo, I fear we're walking a very tight rope of bad taste here. It's becoming more and more common in modern films, digging up old deceased actors for cameos. I mean, they brought back Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin for Rogue One, along with Carrie Fisher. The Flash film dug up what they claim to be old footage of Christopher Reeve's post-mortem. And a deceased Harold Ramis came back in Ghostbusters Afterlife. This all feels a, a little bit icky and slightly morbid to me. But we're living in the age of AI. I mean, hell, most Hollywood scripts are probably written by AI. I mean, how else do you explain Madam Webb? And it won't be long before we have a new buddy cop film being released starring Bruce Lee and John Belushi. Marilyn Monroe will be the love interest that they're fighting over, and of course the villain will be Christopher Lee. Ugh... I hate this timeline. Anyway, this film had a great concept, an idea, but ultimately it shat the bed. In my opinion, there is only three Alien films. Yes, I still count David Finch's third instalment as canon, flaws and all. But anyway guys, that's my cheeky little review of Alien Romulus. Write down below if you've seen it, what are your thoughts on it, but more importantly, what is your favourite Alien instalment? And of course, if you made it this far into the episode, please give me a thumbs up because your love and support keeps me going because I just love movies and I assume you do as well. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe icon because I give it an episode weekly. And I'll see you back here next week for the next review, but until then, stay spooky, kids. Mm -hmm.